The wall is like a sign to say, go away from here. It is intimidating. It is taking more and more of our land. I am a dying woman. I used to belong to the Anglican Church in Jerusalem and was a volunteer there. I arranged the flowers and was active with the other women. Now I cannot go to Jerusalem. The wall separates me from my church, from my life. All my life was in Jerusalem. I was there daily. I worked there at a school as a volunteer and all my friends live there. All my relationships with Jerusalem are dead. I am a dying woman. I 
Ankarem. I was born in Ankarem in 1934. My grandmother was also born there. Ankarem is a very old village where Muslims and Christian people used to live together. The Zionist army came to the village in 1948 and they were shooting. We were forced to leave because it was dangerous to stay. I was 13 at that time. Once we went back to Ain Karim to see the village. We couldn't visit our home because the Israelis were there and they prevented us. My mother wanted to see our house, our furniture, our clothes and other belongings. But the Israelis didn't let her enter, instead they locked the door. Hallelujah. 
During one of the Intifada days, I, a young Palestinian woman who was four months pregnant and lost my baby because of Israeli tear gas. I was terribly depressed since I wa it was the second miscarriage I suffered during the last three years. A week later, I visited a medical doctor in Jerusalem for a checking up. Coming out of the doctor's clinic, I saw nearby, on top of an escalator, an Israeli child who was recklessly playing and about to fall down. Thoughts rushed through my mind. Should I leave him and let him die the way the Israeli soldiers let my baby die a week ago? Or should I make a desperate attempt to grab him? All of a sudden, I felt an impulse that made me hurry forwards Throwing myself in front of the baby, I prevented his fall. Yeah, boy. 
Baking bread. In the Jalazon refugee camp north of Ramallah, during a curfew, the Israeli military severed the supply of gas and electricity. The women made a communal fire, which was kept burning with old shoes and rags when the wood had run out. The soldiers came to put the fire out and throw away the tooth. The women resisted, shouting, Go tell your leaders, no matter what you do, no matter what kind of restrictions you impose upon us, we will not allow our children to starve. We will find a way to bake bread. And all your efforts to destroy our spirit are not going to succeed. What God has created, no one can destroy. Thank you.